Welcome to Learnpedia, the ultimate JE and NEET prep tool currently being used by more than 20,000 aspirants. Let's see if you can answer this important question. If you think you got the answer, post it in the comment section below. To understand the concept behind this question, go ahead and watch the full video. Structure of stomatal apparatus. Stomatal apparatus consists of two guard cells and these guard cells have a thick wall towards the center and a thin wall towards outside. These guard cells contain a few chloroplasts. The guard cells are surrounded by four or less number of cells. They are called subsidiary cells. So the guard cells, the opening stoma and the subsidiary cells, these constitute the stomatal apparatus. Look at the animation, structure of stomata, upper epidermis, lower epidermis, surface of the leaf, epidermal cell and here is stomatal apparatus. These are guard cells. The wall of the guard cells is thick towards the center, that is opening stoma and a thin towards outside. Each guard cell contains a few chloroplasts. Look at the movement of the guard cells. Stoma is being closed and opened due to the movement of the guard cells. This is the structure of stomatal apparatus or guard cells in monocots. These are guard cells. These guard cells are dumbbell shaped. The wall at the center is thick and the tips have thin walls. This is the stomatal opening. Well, to continue with the structure of the stomatal apparatus, the stomatal apparatus consists of A, guard cells, B, subsidiary cells, the opening stoma. So the guard cells are two in number and these guard cells are bean shaped or kidney shaped and this is the cell wall. This cell wall towards inside is thick. The thickness is due to the deposition of cellulose and each guard cell has a nucleus and the cytoplasm contains chloroplasts. These are the chloroplasts. The guard cells are surrounded by maximum four cells. These four cells are called subsidiary cells. And the most important factor is these subsidiary cells, they do not contain chloroplasts. These subsidiary cells are surrounded by epidermal cells. Epidermal cells are many, all around epidermal cells are present. If this is stomatal apparatus, these are the subsidiary cells and these subsidiary cells are surrounded by epidermal cells. These epidermal cells also do not have chloroplasts. So in the entire epidermis, the only cells that contain chloroplasts are these guard cells. This is the stomatal apparatus complete structure. Look at this image. These are the stomata in dicots. These are the guard cells. Here see the wall. This is thickened inner wall and this is stoma and here the guard cells are reniform means kidney shaped. This is the structure in dicots. Look at the monocots. This is the epidermis and in this epidermis say these are the stomata. Here the guard cells are dumbbell shaped. In this dumbbell shape the guard cells have two ends which are made up of thin walls. This is a thin walled portion and in the middle the cell wall is thickened. This also contains chloroplasts. These are the chloroplasts. Of course the nucleus will be there. Here is a concept that you should remember. That is all plants living in direct sunlight. They are called heliophytes. In heliophytes, the epidermis does not possess chloroplasts except guard cells. Plants which live in shade, they are called cyophytes. 
and the plants which live in water they are hydrophytes these zoophytes and hydrophytes they have chloroplasts in epidermal cells you should note this difference between heliophytes and the zoophytes and hydrophytes accordingly the heliophytes do not possess chloroplasts in the epidermis except guard cells but these plants they have chloroplasts in the entire epidermis and why this explanation because chloroplasts play a vital role in closing and opening of stomata so this role of light and the role of chloroplasts in the movement of stomata will be studied after some time the mechanism of movement of stomata to understand the mechanism of stomatal movement you should go back to certain phenomena they are turgidity and flaccidity when a cell is a living cell and this is cell wall and inside there is plasma membrane and the protoplasm is as a thin layer there is the nucleus now this thin layer of protoplasm is called primordial utricle the center of this cell is occupied by a large vacuole and this vacuole is filled with cell sap this cell sap is nothing but cell solution if this cell is placed in a beaker of water what happens the water enters into the cell by osmosis so naturally the cell enlarges the enlargement of the cell is called turgidity so the basic principle involved in stomatal movement is endosmosis so endosmosis leads to turgidity of the cell and when the cell becomes turgid the cell wall expands now if the cell wall thickness is not uniform what would be the result say this is the cell wall thickened on one side only and the remaining cell wall is thin this is thin now you take it as a balloon pump air into it this will not expand but this expands when the thin wall expands what shape it gets it gets a concave shape like this because this part of the cell wall does not expand only the other side expands so naturally it takes a bend if two such cells face opposite to each other so naturally these cells take a kidney shape and before expansion so the cells are like this the opening in between these two cells is like a small slit like opening and when they expand like this the slit widens so the condition for movement of the stomata is the guard cells should have thickness on one side and a thin wall on the other side and for both the guard cells this thickness must be towards the stoma that is opening what makes the guard cells to expand that is the question we should answer these are living cells and they need to become turgid to gain turgidity these cells must have hypertonic solution when they contract like this they should become flaccid and these are turgid so the concentrations of the cell sap hypertonic hypotonic isotonic these phenomena should be applied to the guard cells so for expansion they need to become turgid and to become turgid they should have hypertonic solution and now what makes the cell sap to become hypertonic so this question we should answer this is the guard cell and one side wall is thick this has chloroplasts there is light and when light falls on the chloroplasts naturally photosynthesis takes place in the presence of light so the result is carbohydrates are synthesized 
these carbohydrates bring about high concentration in the cell sap provided the carbohydrates are soluble sugars now does this explanation hold good let us examine the different possibilities by which the god cells become turgid that is they should become hypertonic and endosmosis should take place then the god cells should expand let us see the possibilities one by one stoma opens when so of all these the correct option is c god cells swell then only the stoma opens due to an increase in their water potential so in the god cells if more and more water enters then the water potential increases this exerts pressure that is a tarkara pressure the stoma opens hey there hope you understood the concept here's the solution to the question asked at the beginning Found this video useful? Hit the like and share icons to enjoy more such videos. Learnpedia's JE and NEET prep tools contain more than 4,000 videos and over 20,000 solved examples. These can be accessed online through our website or offline through an SD card or a pen drive. To buy now, visit www.learnpedia.in. You can also experience a free demo of our product before buying.